What's up, Mets fans? It's your boy, CP, and welcome back to the latest episode of the True Mets Talk podcast. In this episode, I'm going to be discussing the transformation of 2024 Sean Manaya and how he's been able to change himself from a back end of the rotation arm to a formidable front end starter for the New York Mets. And it goes way beyond just a change in hairstyle. You are now watching the True Mets Talk podcast, talking New York Mets baseball 24 7, 365, with your host, CP. All right, before we get into it, make sure you all hit that thumbs up for me. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new and you like what you hear. And let me know what you think about this video in the comment section down below. Sean Manaya has 100% been the most reliable New York Mets starting pitcher as of right now and as of his last few starts, turning back to back starts of 10 plus strikeouts, something that has not been done by a lefty starting pitcher for the New York Mets since Mr. Johan Santana. And you can see his 2024 season statistics down below right here in orange. He is having a phenomenal year across 120 innings pitch. So how did a guy that went from a successful bullpen arm for the San Francisco Giants last season go from that to becoming a formidable rotation starter on the hunt for a new contract as one of the better pitchers in the National League. Let's take a look into the transformation of Sean Manaya. First up, we have his changes in pitch distribution here. And I pulled two select games, one in which he really did struggle, which was his first game back from the All-Star break against the Miami Marlins. And then I compared that to what types of pitches and his distribution chart was based off of his last outing on August 5th against the St. Louis Cardinals. You can see here versus the Marlins, he went five innings pitched, eight hits surrendered, five earned runs, and only one strikeout in comparison to his latest time out, seven innings pitched in St. Louis, six hits, zero earned runs, and 10 strikeouts. So how did this come to be? Well, the first thing that you directly notice and that jumped out at me was the abandonment of the changeup. Throwing 14 changeups in that Miami Marlins start, or I should say against the Miami Marlins, and only throwing one single changeup against the St. Louis Cardinals here recently. But he also has made it an emphasis, and I talk about this on our pregame streams when Sean Manaya is scheduled to start all the time establishing the four-seam fastball early and often to change the eye level of the opposing bats. Because at that point, they are at Sean Manaya's mercy when he decides to go ahead and throw his sweeper, which he did 30 times last time out against the St. Louis Cardinals. And he only did so half the time in a rough outing against the Miami Marlins. So you can see here, changes in the sinker. From 31 to 51, changes in the four-seam fastball from 10 to 20, and changes in the sweeper while abandoning the changeup has made Sean Manaya a lethal, lethal pitcher up on that mound and has produced better results from one timeout to the next timeout. But it doesn't just go into, and it doesn't just limit itself into the changes in pitch distribution with Sean Manaya. Because as soon as I heard in the broadcast, in Colorado, from Steve Gelbs, the adjustments that Sean Manaya made to his mechanics in mimicking Chris Sale of the Atlanta Braves, that struck a light bulb in my head to make this video. Take a look at these two standstill freeze frames of Sean Manaya from early into the season on April 7th against the Cincinnati Reds versus now against the St. Louis Cardinals, this very same game where he pitched seven scoreless innings. What do you notice here? This is about a four-month differential in the season, and it jumps out at me like a sore thumb, and in a great way. I shouldn't use it in a negative connotation because this is a fantastic change in mechanics that has shown Sean Manai and proved him to be successful over the long haul of this season. 
So the direct thing that I notice here is just his body posture in general. He seems to be a little bit more crouched in his stance. And he seems to be pointing his glove and his shoulders, tilting a little bit more towards the sky on the left earlier in the season, as opposed to on the right, he's a little bit more upright and his gloves a little bit higher. And you can see he holds the ball a little higher as well, right behind his back. But also the drastic difference in what he is trying to mimic here with Chris Sale is facing and positioning his body more toward the left-handers batter's box, which prevents him presumably. Now, like I said, I have not been a pitcher most of my career playing baseball growing up, but the overall throwing mechanics, if you are closing yourself off, you prevent the leakage that would happen and coming across your body with that baseball on your follow through. And that's exactly what I think Sean Manaya is trying to accomplish by mimicking Chris Sale. And it blew my mind when I looked at and I heard the broadcast and them talking about Sean Manaya and Chris Sale. Because when you watch him live, he definitely looked like he had some mechanic tweaks along the season, along the way. Now, to the naked eye, obviously, it's very subtle. So I had to take two freeze frame clips and I apologize if they're a little pixelated but if you look at then versus now this is absolutely mind-boggling and this is also contributing to the more consistent success that Sean Manaya has had this season and like I said Sean Manaya is on an expiring deal he's got he's on a two-year deal that David Stearns actually gave him this past offseason but he had a player option given to him after the first season he is almost certainly going to be opting out, as I mentioned in my previous stream, as he's only due $13.5 million and the starting pitching market, especially in this offseason, is going to go nuts and he is going to make himself a pretty penny wherever he ends up. But Sean Manaya, whether it's this right here with his pitch distribution or the mechanic tweaks that he made in 2024, and whether you want to draw it up to Sean Manaya himself making these adjustments or Jeremy Hefner potentially stepping in, it doesn't matter because Sean Manaya has been fantastic, and I'm looking forward to what he has in store for the rest of the regular season. Let's go Mets, and let's go Sean Manaya. Thank you for watching the True Mets Talk podcast. Make sure you're tapping on that notifications button and checking out all the latest content on the channel. Thank you.